kind of films are the ones that could actually happen. And I believe that things like that happen a lot and we just don't ever hear about it. So thanks so much for letting us have the world premiere and I'm gonna bring up one of the two men who have made this creation, Mark Cornell, all the way from Chapel Hill. Thanks for being here. First time to the Outer Banks. Oh, wow. And you just got here like, uh, like uh, 20, minutes ago. 20 minutes ago. There's a lot with the film I want to talk about, but I also want to talk about, I noticed that you actually are from California. You went to UCLA, and I started looking through your resume, which is so long, and I'm wondering how did you wind up here in North Carolina? Gosh, that's a long story. Uh, so I, I, I was Air Force family, and we ended up in California. Um, grew up mostly in California. Um, went to UCLA, went to, went to school there. Uh, met my wife uh, at UCLA, and she got a job at, at UNC. Um, we met in graduate school. And we said we were looking to get out of Los Angeles. Uh, um, I was tired of LA, tired of the fighting traffic all the time. I wanted to move to a small college town, and I, we just sort of w said whatever job she can get at a small college town, we would do it. And one of the options was uh, UNC, and we moved sight unseen. I had never been to Chapel Hill. We did not visit at all. I just said, let's go, let's do it, and so we did. That's awesome. Because typically, it's the other way around, you know, people from over here are trying to get over there, and so I thought that was interesting that you're from over there, but now you're over here. So how has been a couple of years, I guess, since graduate school? Uh, since graduate school, it's been uh, t uh, 20. 20? 20. 20 years since graduate school. Um, so we moved uh, 14 years ago, um, uh, and I don't regret it at all. I love uh, North Carolina, even though it's been, I have never been to the Outer Banks, it's been 14 years. We don't travel in the state much, which is kind of odd. Um, my, my son was born uh, 12 years ago and I uh, haven't traveled in North Carolina much, but um, I, I, I love it out here. I loved California, I love UCLA and Los Angeles, I highly recommend it, but you know, I just had enough and I was, I was ready for a small town quiet life. and. Uh, and we have it, and I just, I love it there, I really do. That's great to hear. So, I guess since you came here, um, you, you met another man named Mark. Mark he, Jansen, yeah. Yes, so you start, started your Marked Men Productions. Um, uh, it was up there, but, so you and the other Mark, you guys split everything equally down the middle with this particular film. Like, you both directed it, you both wrote it, you both starred in it, and... Yeah, we, we, we almost did pretty much everything in this movie. Um, before the movies, I, I was a playwright. Well, I'm still a playwright, really. Um, so I was in theater for a long time. Eh, I'm still in theater. Uh, in the movies, uh, it's funny, having lived in Los Angeles and in the movie business and coming out here, really, I didn't actually start making movies until I, until I came out here. And this venture with Mark is only a few years old, and um, it came out of... I had made some other films and it cost me so much money and I had to hire so many people and having uh, uh, being in charge of this entire crew and how expensive it was, I just, I, I, can't, I can't, I can't work, I can't operate like this. So we, we scaled everything back and Mark and I decided to start making movies with our iPhone. So I shot this with, with an iPhone. Um, That's and, awesome. Uh, and so all of our movies, we've made five now, uh, we're shooting with the iPhone. We just finished another one. and. Um, and yeah, so we do almost almost everything on the set. Uh, you know, recording sound, I, I hung up a, a mic, a boom mic, down from a tree uh, above the cage, literally right above the cage. Uh, so we didn't have a sound person on set. Uh, and when we, most of the movie, I set up myself and then would get back, get back into the cage. So I would get up and go behind the camera and get up. And then I would get help whenever the camera moved. I obviously had to have somebody 
with this, but we, we had a very, very small crew, and it's uh, far less expensive to make these kinds of movies than the other movies, and um, I don't regret it at all, uh, uh, making a switch. Um, so, uh, so we are just gonna continue to make these, and, and hopefully really soon make a, make a feature with the, with the iPhone. Nice, that's awesome. And again, like North Carolina, the scenery out there, because North Carolina is a huge, long state, and yeah, you don't have to go far before you're nowhere, and so it's kind of cool that you used the scenery. I guess you probably had to drive a couple miles out a of town. A few miles outside of town. Yeah, one of the things I discovered about, well, probably anywhere around here, is you don't have to go very far and you're in the woods. Right. Um, uh, and Chapel Hill's the same way. Um, um, and yeah, so it was just really kind of down on the road and hang a right, and we're at this uh, friend's house, and and it's it was just shot around around her house. Nice. So how did you guys like come up with this particular story? Were you familiar with the birds at all? Well, so the birds, um, so this house where it was where it was shot, uh, the um, the woman who owns it had some friends coming from Florida with those macaws. Um, and I guess on the way to North Carolina, the birds were in the cabin of the truck, but the cage fell out the back on the highway and was destroyed. And so they called ahead and said, well, we have these birds, we're coming to visit, but we don't have a place to put them. And so Mark, my partner, uh, built that cage. Mm -hmm. And so that shot that, he, uh, that it's at the beginning, he just took with his, his phone of the, of the birds and showed it to me and I said, well, we gotta make a movie with this cage, don't we? Uh, and maybe we should put me in it. And um, it kind of went, it kind of went from there. The birds are fine. Uh, yeah. They're they're back in Florida. I was wondering if you brought them no, to the orange they're, carpet. They're, they're beautiful. They're beautiful birds, uh, and they're back in Florida. Yes, so and that's true. They really do live to be they live quite a hundred years. Sometimes. I, yeah, I don't know that much about them, but 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 this is what they were all all telling me about the birds. So. Yeah, and the film itself, like for just the two of you guys, I could. feel feel the pain there, you know, with your, you know, the other Mark and how he was so upset. But you really almost don't even, like, really feel that until that last scene where he's with the feathers and he's like, um, do you have, like, which one of you guys came up with just, like, the anguish and the distraught and the feathers? Um... Well, I, I write all the movies that we do. Um, I'm the writer of the two of us. Uh, I, I tend to write movies about people who are languished. Um, most of the movies we do are dark. My neighbors call me Dark Mark, which <laughs> I don't know whether I should find that <laughs> flattering or not. But, uh, but, uh, um, but those are the kind of movies that appeal to me. Uh, uh, you know, my wife um, has never seen any of the movies that we've we've done. She's deeply disturbed by. Uh, the, the material that we work on, but uh, I enjoy it. It's what can I say? Yeah, well, I enjoy it too. And how about you guys? Does anybody have any questions for Mark? Favorite film, by the way, The Exorcist. Yes. Um, just See again, because that and your films, those are things that can really happen. I was raised Catholic, you know, so As so even I, like yes. the the gory slashers, they don't scare me like those no. types of films because yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Outstanding. <laughs> Thank outstanding. you. Um, I have to echo too. I, 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 I'm in the funeral business, and so the grief and the loss and the distraught you can feel. Uh, quick question. Um, I think that the guy in the cage. That would be me. That I'm, was him. I was the guy in the cage. Yeah, there's yeah. two of them. I, I wasn't sure either. I don't look quite as scary as I didn't recognize life. you without yeah. the beard and the red hair. Yeah, um, not quite as scary. I thought, what was your take on wardrobe? I thought he was too clean, too shaved, too showered, and too sanitary. How, how long was he out there? W one day. He was out there one day. <laughs> um, I was going to do all that. Um, and in our preparation, I started to think about all the other jobs I had to do, and I thought, how far do I really want to go for this? Um, he would probably have urinated on himself. Um, the cage would have been dirtier. But uh, after about 30 minutes out there in the cage, I was uh, glad that I had sacrificed a little artistic integrity for my 
It was very hard on me to shoot that movie. Um, it, it, we, we did it in a, I don't know, um, I like to go back and redo stuff sometimes. Uh, I think six partial days of shooting, and I, I had a terrible cold throughout all of it, and so I was, I was glad I didn't go all the way. But yes, I, I would look a lot worse than I, than I did, but I figured, no, he's out there one day, how bad would he look? But I could have done, I could have done more, no question. So that this could have been a f the feature you were talking about until you got in the cage. You're like, yeah, let's make this a short. Uh, film. No, I, I, I always saw it as a short, short film. I always saw it as a short film. Yeah, good question. Anybody else? Yes. Probably not. Um, Mark's a little tired of the darkness. Uh, he says, Mark, we got to do something a little lighter. A little lighter. Uh, the one uh, that we shot before this was set in a bar, and it was two guys from Boston, <laughs> two guys from Boston. And uh, Mark and I played those guys, and it wasn't. It was about friendship and and uh, two guys going in two different directions, and it was called Two Guys in a Bar. And, um, it was a drama, but it had comedy in it, but it wasn't dark. So I keep reminding him of that. But um, no, uh, the next film will will be uh, um, not not a. Anybody else out there? So you're the you're the darker mark out of out of the two of us, yes. Out of the two. And you, how did you two meet? Did you meet him here? Uh, yes, in in Chapel Hill, uh, in a in a theater thing that uh, we do at a local theater um, called No Shame. If anyone's familiar with it, uh, but uh, it's where you bring five minutes of material. And he just happened to be there that one night, and he did a monologue, and I so I, I met him. So you guys must be like BFFs because it's just the two of you. Uh, we're close, yeah. We're we're definitely close. Uh, Mark spent a lot of time also in Los Angeles as a, as an actor and had been in some movies, uh, um, and so he he was helped me a little bit on familiarizing myself with uh, how how movie op movies operate. Yes, awesome. Yes. Uh, Apollo and Artemis. Um, I, I was just looking for two names that went together. Um, there, there's no Greek connection in the film, uh, but I, I, but I, I loved the name. I was just looking for names, and um, and then when I saw them, uh, I, I thought, I, 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 I thought, well, that, that, those are nice. Those are nice names, and maybe someone will read into it and and, and see something some great meaning that I didn't put into the movie and that they could add to it that would make me sound really smart. Um, here, we'll go behind you. Yes, sir? Uh, did you intentionally uh, go after a passion that uh, your wife wouldn't want to be a passion? <laughs> or was that just good luck? <laughs> I would not call my situation good luck. Uh, uh, no, my wife has no interest in what I'm doing, so that's the, that's not the good. There's nothing good about it. Uh, uh, she has her thing. Uh, uh, she's a professor at UNC and and is doing really well. And this this kind of thing. We met when I was in graduate school. She knew I was a a writer, um, but uh, the arts don't interest her that much. So. But she's supportive, I guess, and just lets you. Yeah, she 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 she. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and here yeah. she said, you're like, hey, do you want to go to the other, you know. The We've other never been to the Outer Banks, I believe was her response. Yeah, for sure. And, and you're excited because tomorrow you're going to go see the Wright Brothers. That's right. That's right. No, no. I, yes, it, it, we, we make it work. Yeah, I find that either, you know, husband wives, they're totally together or they're apart, but the other one doesn't hold you back which is awesome because you can't be creative artist and then have like your wife at home like no i could never have done this without her yeah, no way. and she's like yeah i know where he is you know out there <laughs> she like does we have this app on our phone called life 360 are you all familiar i see a man nodding his head i know some couples will be totally against it but i actually love it so she knows where i am at all times and i know where she is at all times it's just it's i find it to be fascinating i know some of you are going oh my god that sounds terrible but really, 
and we're real, she and I are super close, and I, I, we always like to know where each other is. So right now she's probably staring at her phone, going, "He's in a movie theater. He's in a movie theater." Yes. I'm kidding. She's not doing that. Well, she, and even so, she's just right across the way. So. Yes. Yeah. Courtney, I think you had another question. Um, I've hired people to do the scores before, um, uh, in previous movies years ago. Um, I found it to be extraordinarily expensive. Uh, my first, uh, my second film I made about, uh, I don't know, 11 years ago, um, not with Mark, cost me $15,000, and it's a... 30-minute movie. It's not, it's not a lot of money uh, in the, the, the movie business, but coming out of your own pocket, it's a big deal. Um, and how in the world can I justify that to my family? Um, so uh, uh, it's really about finding work I can get for free, um, finding music I can get for free. Uh, and there's all kinds of music you can get for free online. You just have to search for it and find something that you feel is appropriate. Um, I, I, I could have put music to this, but I never found a spot really in the film where I felt it was necessary. Um, the next film that I just, I'm just about done editing, it's, it's, uh, it has lots of music in it. Um, just this particular one, I just wanted to be really quiet. And the money, that too. Yes. Uh, what was your second part of the question? It's cheaper. Right. Do you mind just because uh, because I was looking because you submitted your film, just um, letting our, our audience know what your budget was for this film. My budget. My budget. Um, how much money did I spend on this movie? Uh, a couple of days I bought sandwiches. Yeah, so. That's it. So Mark and I, I, I don't have to pay him. The other guy, that ha, uh, two other guys that helped us with the movie are close friends of mine. And I just said, hey, could you come and help us shoot, shoot this? And he was thrilled to be a part of it. Um, uh, the cage, Mark built, uh, uh, which, which he paid for. Uh, he, 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 he spent... It was actually, uh, the, the materials were bought by the woman who owns the house, so he didn't actually spend any of it. Uh, and then he just took it apart. Uh, I don't think we have any, any money anywhere else. Uh, Your iPhone bill. Yeah, the iPhone, it costs nothing. We use an, a, uh, uh, an app called Filmic Pro, if any of you all are familiar, familiar with it. It's a superb app to use. You have uh, lots of control uh, over how you make the movie and how the movie looks. Um, Unlike your, your regular camera and your iPhone, um, it's 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 great. I'm still learning a ton, um, but wow, you can do a lot with it. That's so interesting to see because you know you had your formal training out there in LA, and you're kind of just scaling everything down and finding really what's supposed to be the most simple way now. Yeah, I'm not going to do it any other way. I'm I, I'm so I, I'm sorry to the the folks that I used to hire and I used to give lots of money to, but. I just, I can do these films, um, it's just a lot less hassle. It just is. It's, it's, uh, um, the other people are very talented and I'm glad I did those movies, but I, 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 I can't spend all that money. I just can't. Right. And it's nice um, when you do find someone else who's passionate and you can come together and kind of do trades and bounce off of each other. Oh, sure, sure. Most of the other filmmakers that I know in the in the Triangle area, uh, you know, you work the regular way. Um, so when I say I'm, you know, making a film with an iPhone, there's kind of a, you know, hmm, really? Hmm. Mm -hmm. wonder how it's going to turn out. Uh, um, but, you know, I, I, I enjoy doing it.